I'm here with public defender Jeff Adachi. Thanks so much for being here with me today. It's great being here. Uh, so let's jump right in. Very exciting news for persons who are public defenders. Recently, a federal judge ruled that California's death penalty is unconstitutional because our system is so dysfunctional. Tell me your thoughts on that, and what do you think is going to happen now? Well, this is a big decision. A federal district judge, who is a Republican, I might add, found that the death penalty in California was un is unconstitutional. And as a lot of people will recall, there was a ballot measure, a state ballot measure, uh, just two years ago, mm -hmm. which narrowly was defeated, that would have overturned the death penalty and instead had life uh, without the possibility of parole. Uh, substituted. And so what this uh, decision uh, will do, and it basically says that the death penalty should never be imposed because it is not a deterrent, it is not imposed in any consistent manner, and there's also racial bias involved. So, you know, this is a huge decision. Do you think that Kamala Harris, who is also uh, our, our state attorney general, who is against the death penalty, do you think she'll appeal? Well, when Kamala Harris was district attorney, she bravely stood up and did not seek the death penalty in a case where a lot of people thought she would. And so she has voiced her personal opposition to the death penalty, so the hope is, is that she won't appeal this case. Now, it'll only affect the decision in that case. However, we can expect that other judges may uh, agree you know, with this ruling and find the death penalty unconstitutional in other cases as well. Yeah, I was going to ask, how does that actually, how would that actually work? I understand this, these are federal cases, um, but, but what, what's your understanding of the technical way that this would play out if you, say, had a client who was on death row? How would this work? Well, you can certainly cite a case as authority and say one judge found that it's unconstitutional, therefore it's unconstitutional it's unconstitutional in, in my case. And so we can expect that other individuals on death row are gonna raise this same issue. And this judge really uh, comes from a conservative standpoint, but says that the death penalty is just not working. The Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court has also indicated that she does not think the death penalty uh, you know, should be continued in California. So we might be reaching a real critical point in terms of how California deals with the death penalty. So it's huge. Well, to your point, I mean, the, the, the proposition two years ago narrowly failed. It was the narrowest margin that we've had in the state of California. So maybe we are on the precipice of something. But I want to jump to another subject. Recently, also, um, federal drug offenses have been reduced. How, how has that impacted um, your office? And, and what do you see coming out of that? Well, people face very severe sentences under federal law. And there is a sentencing scheme uh, that was established years ago. And just recently, Congress uh, got together and they said, you know what, this war on drugs isn't working. We're incarcerating too many people. The United States incarcerates more people than any other country in the world. And what uh, the, the Congress did is they reduced penalties uh, for most drug offenses. So this will make as many as 50,000 Americans who are behind bar uh, bars for drug offenses, some you know possession offenses, some minor offenses, uh, eligible now for release. So this is going to have a huge impact on you know both the prison system as well as our communities. And we have to make sure that our communities are prepared uh, when 50,000 people return. And they're not going to be released all at once. It's going to be you know over a period of time. Now, is that something your office would deal with, going in and petitioning for reduced sentences for particular people? These are, are federal uh, cases. And so you know my office, the Public Defender's Office, represents uh, persons convicted of state offenses. But uh, we're seeing the same thing here with state realignment, where we have now people who would have been serving time in state prison into the local community. So I see this as a positive development. I mean, we're spending too much time and resources on prosecuting people for drug offenses. So, you know, this is a watershed moment, I think, when you talk about this whole war on drugs and the fact that we have spent billions of dollars uh, fighting uh, a war that can't be won. And at the same time, we're seeing legalization of marijuana in Colorado, Seattle, and other places. So wow, it's a good it's time a new to be world. a public defender. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, I have to ask, um, what's it like to never have an opponent run against you? <laughs> well, Do I you mean, look at other elected officials and go, it's hilarious well, you how you guys have to knock run? knock on wood. I mean, you know, <laughs> But I, I, I've been very fortunate uh, to be able to have the job. I love you know, being public defender and being able to stand up. And I still take cases now. I have a great staff. 
of about is two. Is that normal for public defenders to actually try cases? Uh, many do not, but I, I do. It's important to keep one foot in the courtroom, and so I, I know what my staff goes through every day, and uh, it's a great job. I love it. All righty. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Melissa Griffin-Kane with KPIX 5.